Hi there folks and welcome back to Ukes of Alex. This is the ukulele channel where we try and absorb as much about the ukulele and ukulele culture that we can in one go and we put them up in bite-sized forms for you folks on YouTube. Uh, today we're going to look at a new ukulele, something I got as a Christmas present from a friend of mine. So technically you could say that I am now an influencer because somebody has gifted me this instrument and uh, I do own it and I love it and I helped um, concept this instrument so it seems only right that I'm one of the first to talk about it. Today we are going to look at the Snail S60 Baritone but not just an S60 Baritone this particular one is the first left-handed one and what makes it left-handed you say well first of all the rosette is correct for a left-handed person as opposed to normally in reverse as you'll see now that's how it would look for you folks normally and back and you have the beveled armrest on the right side for me as a player which is a really nice treat for an instrument under a thousand pounds so what is the snail s60 in fact what is snail ukuleles snail ukuleles are a brand uh, made in china that have been distributed through a number of years in the uk by a great company called red chili audio a friend of mine called steve uh, bought snail into the country for the first time i think in 2015 and in just five years they grew to be I would say on a level footing with Ohana and Carla and Cordoba and Lanakai brands that have been around much much longer snail were the new kid on the block but they've really settled on the block and uh, they're not going anywhere anytime soon um, but one thing snail had never done was baritone ukulele so I was talking to Steve um, and he mentioned about you know what's the gaps in the market for snail and I it, baritone seemed like the obvious choice because I don't know if you've noticed this if you're clicking on this video perhaps you've already researched baritones maybe even own one or two but there really isn't a great deal of choice for baritone ukuleles and there is a stigma attached to them that they are basically just a kid's guitar with four strings and I couldn't be more false, you really couldn't get further from the truth. If you buy a baritone ukulele made of a tropical wood like acacia or koa, the distinctive melodic quality and tonality of a baritone is so different to a guitar. I've been playing guitar for 30 years. I've been playing baritone ukulele uh, on and off for about 10. And I do not go, oh, I want to play my guitar, but it's too big, I'll pick up my baritone. I I play a baritone ukulele when I want a baritone ukulele sound and that confirms to me as a player that the baritone uke is where it's at for certain types of music. So I explained this to Steve who very very quickly went back and forth with Snail and we talked about which models were most popular and undeniably the most popular Snail model is the S60T which I'll do a screenshot from Southern Ukulele Store video now for you and uh, a baritone version of this ukulele I felt really did fill a gap because if you are researching baritone ukuleles and you've got I don't know say you've got a 500 pound budget your option is Pono and nothing <laughs> so you know you've got Carla, Ohana, Lanakai you've got a few brands Cordoba that produce instruments up to about 500 pound then there's this massive gap and then there is Kanalea and Kamaka at £1,200 plus. And earlier last year, uh, my friend Matt and I, a World of Ukes, we, we approached Uluru about making a special baritone around the £800 price point, which was fantastic and sold very quickly because people want that kind of thing. And finally, after a long chat, and I'm sorry for a bit of waffling, we have the S60B by Snail. This isn't the only baritone they're going to be launching. Uh, in 2021, they will be launching the BHC5B and an SUBM1 to fit the more modest priced, um, the more modest budget player. But if you want something around that five to six hundred pound price point, this is a fantastic choice. The S60B is all solid acacia, flamed acacia, always really pretty, never plain, never boring on the top sorry about the light i'm tried filming in a different place and it's a bit quirky and you've got acacia on the back and sides as well really nicely figured acacia the back on the s60b introduces a really new and unique 
um, back piece of binding to um, to join the two tops. So you see it's got almost a kind of spear, uh, two-headed pencil effect going on in Paduk and Maple. And then on the front you have this really big abalone rosette, which I think is just gorgeous. You also have abalone do uh, dots, abalone dots going all the way up the fingerboard too. And at the top you have a slotted headstock with that maple snail logo and these really lovely heart shaped tuners. Can you see them? With red or amber, we should say, buttons. The snail baritones are quite unique in that they have a 35mm nut, nut width. Most baritone ukuleles by default will have a 38mm nut width and a slightly wider string spacing. The reason for sticking with the 35mm nut width is because many players that are playing this kind of priced instrument really favour the 35mm nut width and it's going to be one of those decisions where you make some people happy and some people very unhappy. But if you look at the most popular ukulele at that price currently, which is Pono, their baritones have a 35mm nut width, but people don't necessarily notice or ask about that. So in many ways the snail is kind of following what's currently working in the market. Finally you have front and back paduk binding, red paduk binding. You can really see how nicely the nicest acacia is here. And the instrument doesn't come with a strap button. I've added my own strap buttons. So I really highly recommend if you want a strap button. These Goto relict buttons are my favourite really small button with a small footprint see I put it off center don't worry folks if you buy from the southern ukulele store it won't be me fitting your strap button I uh, my own instruments I put much less care and attention into than I do yours so uh, yeah uh, I'm gonna talk finally about the strings and then I'm gonna give you a couple of different sound samples of this uke firstly I've been experimenting for the past month with different strings and I have gone through pretty much everything from a really traditional black nylon string to an all fluorocarbon set to um, I even tried some aquilas and uh, the two sets of strings that really sang to me and really stood out. The first one is uh, a custom set that we put together with Dario, um, which is kind of a jazz set. It's two black nylon strings and two bronze wound strings. Now these are originally designed for classical guitar but have been repurposed for baritone ukulele here. And they're nice and fat and thick and warm and I think that they give you a tone that is unlike a guitar, which is the danger with playing a baritone ukulele as I mentioned at the start. And the release and the softness of the whole thing, it's kind of like a warm hug and that's what I want from a baritone ukulele. Afterwards, I'm going to show you a sound sample of this ukulele with Daddario Titaniums and the strings are the EJ87Bs. Now they are a nylon string as well, but a really hard and less stretchy nylon like fluorocarbon, which will be two clear, sort of kind of pearless color um, nylon strings with two wound silver strings, which give a brighter, harder sound. So you can see really what the S60B is capable of with um, with various different strings there. I've talked enough, quite a long video here folks, but I'm sure some of you will have stuck with me to the end. Let's give the S60B a play, see what you think. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 